Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about this flashlight right here. Now despite what this may say on the body and on the little mount right here, this is not an actual Surefire flashlight. And also it does have a little QR code on there that does not work or at least I wasn't able to get it to work. Maybe you can, yeah, it wouldn't read it, but I'm just assuming that's because it's a knockoff. So if you've seen these online, this is a copy of the Surefire M640 DF, the dual fuel, which means it should be able to take a 18650 battery, um, like this Surefire here, or two CR123 batteries with a little sleeve insert that goes with it. So those are the options that this should be able to work with, or at least the actual Surefire uses. Now, this one specifically only comes with this Picatinny rail mount right here, uh, which is fine as long as you have a Picatinny rail section. It does not come with the M-Lock part like this Surefire one here does. Now, this is an actual Surefire Vampire, but it does not come with that mount right there that mounts directly into an M-Lock. Now, that said, I think I saw it for sale for like $10, $15 for that M-Lock attachment, so... If that's what you want, you can buy that, spend you know 10 more dollars and get that. But I've been looking for a Surefire knockoff, again this is made in China, that was a copy of the Dual Fuel because all the ones that I've seen online are around 400 lumens or so. Um, all the different ones that I've seen that are knockoffs of these, including the Vampire knockoff which I have right over here, it's about 400 lumens. Now the Candel on that one is actually pretty good, so I imagine the Candel on the other ones are good as well, but none of those flashlights in my opinion were worth the $70 because they were only 400 lumens. I'm like, for $70, you can get, you know, a used Streamlight or, so, or even a Streamlight, the uh, the Poly, Polytech, I can't remember what it's called. It's like 40 bucks, but it's around 500 lumens. So you can get a solid made flashlight um, for, you know, $70 or under that was from a reputable brand. So until they came out with something like this that, you know, has this mounting system on there, because again, all the other ones came with the standard uh, M600 mount, which is fine as long as you're using Picatinny rail, but it's kind of big and clunky and it doesn't really suck it up into the rail as nice as this one does. Uh, so I wanted this specific mount and I wanted a flashlight that had a good amount of lumens. Um, one nice thing, and I'll show you here in a little bit as well, um, the lumens on here are awesome. They're about 1200. I think it advertises 1200 with the CR123s and 1400 with a 18650. Now, I did buy this 18650 battery because I can use this with something else that I have as well. Um, but I bought this specifically for this flashlight to see if it worked in it. And it would not work with it. So, I don't know if it's just because this 18650 has a little button on the uh, plus side. And maybe you need one that's flat on the top. Um, but I'm not going to buy a whole bunch of flash uh, batteries to see which one works with this flashlight. Because this flashlight isn't worth spending that amount of money on. In my opinion. Now, if you already have an 18650 battery that doesn't have this button, it'll probably, it, I would assume it will work. The reason it didn't work um, with this one is whenever I would put it in there, I would start screwing the head all the way back down, and the head wouldn't screw down more than about two turns. Um, and it, you know, takes about four complete rotations to actually lock it on there, and it would only go about halfway down, which means the gasket in there would not have been engaging, so it wouldn't have been a waterproof. Now, it did work with this in there, with the head only screwed halfway on. But again, I did not want to leave it that way. Whenever I was using the flashlight with that battery, the brightness was pretty much the exact same as with two CR123 batteries. So I wouldn't bother, even if you have, you know, or if you're wanting to buy one of these, unless you just want a rechargeable feature, like that's fine. But just know you're not going to get a higher candela output or the higher lumen output with the rechargeable batteries. Um, is that a big deal? No, not really. For me, this thing is still plenty bright, and I was actually very happy with how bright it was. I would say it is on par from a lumen output. And if you're familiar with the Streamlight, this is the Protac HLX uh, rail mount from Streamlight. This thing is around 1,000 lumens, and the Candela on it is ridiculous. So you know this is just a Candela monster because the size of the bezel is just huge. So that's what plays into it. So for the size of this one, and just to give you a comparison, that's the size. Uh, they're about the same length. Um, obviously the bezel on this one's a little bit bigger, so this one would stick out from your rail a little bit more Versus this one is able to suck in a little bit more now for the size of the bezel um, They actually did a pretty good job with this thing the candela is not as good and for those of you who don't know candela is the tightness of the beam which basically means it's gonna be more effective at farther ranges um, It's not as good as this um, But that said it is very close so and again I'll show you some video here in a second of what that looks like outside um, but just to show you up close, 
sorry to blind you here is the beam over here this is the stream light and this is the Chinese surefire knockoff you can see the beam is a little bit brighter in the center on this one than it is versus this one and that's just because the candela is a little bit different but because this one's you know 200 lumens brighter um, you don't really notice that much of a difference you get more flood with this versus that um, so if anything, I would say this might be a smidgen better for most applications, but if you're going for long range, this one's going to have a little bit better uh, throw than this one here would. Here is what the Surefire knockoff looks like. Again, this is the 640 DF dual fuel. You can see it's a very, very bright light. I was actually very impressed with it. I would say it is probably around 1200 lumens or so. Uh, something like that. The candela could be better, um, but for the size of the bezel, that's um, really, really good. I don't know if you can see over here in the tree line, but I can see all the way through. Hopefully you can see there's kind of like a gap right there in the trees. I can see all the trees through that gap, even though you may not be able to on this camera. Uh, so for comparison, here is a Streamlight. Uh, this is the HLX uh, rail mount. It's uh, around a thousand lumens. Um, you can see the candela on this one is better. You can see there's a better hot spot over here, um, but the bezel on this thing is also well, not quite twice the size, not quite twice the size, but it's about you know one and a half times bigger. So that's why it has better candela. So I can't really fault the Surefire knockoff um, for that. So again, that's just kind of a comparison over here, over here. I would say to my eye, I don't know if that shows up better or not. Honestly, they're about the same. Um, you can tell there's a little bit more throw with the stream light over here, um, but you don't lose a whole lot. Also, the uh, the knockoff over here is a more white bluish color versus the stream light is a little bit more yellow tinting. So if that matters to you. All right, now to give you another comparison, here is the Enforce. This is the 700. This is the white light and the IR combo light. And you can tell this one's kind of pathetic. It lights up the shed pretty well. You can see, um, I can see into the wood line, but not nearly uh, a whole lot of details. So again, up close, I don't know if you can see a tree or not on this. Nope, you can't. All right, so again, this is what the Enforce looks like. 700 lumens versus, now you have the Chinese Surefire knockoff, the M640 DF dual fuel knockoff on the left. So again, on the left, 700 lumen Enforce on the right. So you can see it's a huge improvement over this. Um, again, it's you know comparing something that's half the brightness. So I can't really fault the Enforce for being terrible. You know, in comparison, um, it's also a dual fuel model, which means not a dual fuel, but a, a dual light. It's an IR and a white light over here. But you can see just how bright this Surefire knockoff is in comparison to this. Here is the Surefire Vampire knockoff, the Chinese knockoff that I have. Um, okay, you can see on here, I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but there's a very defined hot spot with this one, and you get a little bit of kind of rings uh, that show up around it, so there's not as much flood, it's more of a hot spot. And here is the dual fuel model. So if you can see, dual fuel left, the Surefire Vampire knockoff on the right. And again, both of these are Chinese knockoffs. So you can just kind of see the comparison um, between these two. Again, over here, this is the Vampire knockoff. Here's the dual fuel knockoff. I would say from throw, from a throw standpoint, the dual fuel definitely has more throw. I would say it's probably, I don't know, 30% brighter. Uh, at least as far as the hot spot goes um, but you get significantly more flood um, with the dual fuel over here so again just the comparison side by side you can see there's a lot more flood and that you don't really lose any candela with the dual fuel and it may just be because it puts out so many lumens that you can't tell um, but it's noticeably brighter at distance it's also a slightly different color the the vampire knockoff is a little bit more bluey or blue color versus this one is more white i don't have a real surefire uh dual fuel flashlight so i don't have the 640 uh, df model but i do have a surefire vampire and this is a real surefire vampire so again here's the chinese knockoff dual fuel on the right here's a surefire 
or sorry, on the left, here's a Surefire on the right. So you can see the hot spot is more defined with the Surefire. And so the Candela, I would say, is probably about equal. Uh, hopefully that focuses on the shed pretty well over there. Uh, there's not much of a difference, honestly, uh, between the two when it comes to Candela. So I would say the throw is probably about the same on both of these. Um, and that's just because uh, this one has a lot more lumens versus this one. But the Candela, if you know anything about Candela uh, on the Surefires, the Candela on the Vampire is ridiculous. So this one over here is only around 400 lumens, if I remember right, but it's able to keep up with this 1200 lumen light because the Candela is ridiculous. Now, if you notice over here, uh, there's not a whole lot of flood versus this one lights up the entire yard. So again, if they were able to make this one more uh, Candela, like it would blow the vampire out of the water but considering this is about 400 lumens and this one's 1200 lumens um you can just kind of see the comparison there but um it makes me realize how good uh the surefire vampire is in comparison and it's just because of that candela so if you can see over there the tree line uh, which i can uh, whenever i use these two back and forth i don't really lose yeah i don't really lose anything except for the flood so again, with the knockoff over here, I can see pretty much my entire yard. This one over here, I'm limited to that specific hot spot. There's not nearly as much flood. There's a little bit of flood, but there's not nearly as much flood. All right, so I had this light mounted. I don't know if you'll be able to see the burn marks on here, but yeah, you can see it right there. So you can see the anodizing on there is a little bit scratched and scuffed, um, and there's a little bit like carbon burning right there. This is because I had the muzzle break on, it's just an A2 uh, muzzle brake on the end of my rifle. I had it pretty much right here uh, in line with this, so all that gas was going directly into that. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to kind of use that as a little bit of a torture test to see if it would flicker under recoil, which it did not. which a lot of these Chinese uh, Surefire knockoffs, they don't have flickering problems whenever they're turned on. So that, that can't be said of a lot of other cheaper lights. So if you're worried about that, I wouldn't be. Now, obviously it dug into the aluminum here a little bit to the anodizing. So the anodizing probably isn't as durable as, you know, like a real Surefire or something else would be. But um, if you just move it just slightly back from the muzzle brake, it's where you should have it, <laughs> honestly. Uh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal or, you know, spray paint it, whatever you want. That'll probably protect it some too. Um, if you'll notice on here, the body is a little bit bigger than a standard. This is a Surefire Vampire knockoff. You can see the body is a little bit fatter, just so it can accept this, the 186050 battery. Um, is that a big deal? No, not really. Uh, the tail cap on these is the exact same tail cap. I think the threading might be different on some of them, but the tail cap is the exact same size as the other Chinese knockoffs for the M600 series. Now, I did try switching out tail caps and heads with other things to see if I could get them to work. Um, the vampire head would not work on this, um, because the threading was different. Uh, this head was not able to work on there. And when I say the vampire, I meant the actual surefire vampire head didn't work on here. Uh, the tail caps are interchangeable with the other Chinese knockoff ones, but I tried this actual surefire. I forgot the name of this tail cap. It's the, the button with the plug in for the switch. This tail cap did not work. Uh, the threading was the same but the buttons wouldn't interact so that didn't work the connections on the inside weren't the same so just know if you buy this the head that comes with it and the tail caps are come with it, it's pretty much what you're stuck with now it does come with you know a clicky tail switch here for a tape switch uh that comes with a clicky and the the tape switch plug in so that's good it works it also comes <laughs> with a pressure pad here that says surefire on it that is obviously well it's upside down but it's obviously not surefire so it does come with a sticker that actually covers a surefire that says like warning hot when left on or something like that. I don't remember, but um, so they don't actually advertise it as a surefire online, but you can get these on eBay for, I think around $70, I want to say. I think that's what I paid for this one. And for 70 bucks, I mean, this is a solid light because I mean, this light right here is around $100 to $125, depending on where you buy it from. And don't get me wrong. I think this is probably a little bit more durable of a light and it's very proven, but this one 
um, is on par with output and just, you know, what limited amount of abuse I've been able to give to this thing. Now, if you watch my channel for a while, you know I've abused a snot out of quite a few of uh, these Chinese uh, Surefire knockoffs, and they've all performed flawlessly, and none of them have had problems, and I bought all but one of them myself, so I don't think I got a cherry pick selection. Now, I... Now, I've talked about, you know, kind of the fit and finish on these kind of things. And again, it takes tape switches. And it does work with the Unity taps right here. Uh, you can see it does work with that dual tape switch uh, just fine uh, with its plug-in. So if you're worried about that, it will work with all the standard Surefire plugins. That wasn't an issue. I mean, it also works with... Let's see if I can pull it out over here. It also works with this knockoff. I don't remember who made this. Um, this is off of Amazon. It's a little airsoft, you know, dual tape switch that comes with a little Surefire pad here. It does work with that as well. Now, a couple of negatives that I'll talk about right here real quick is the mount here. So, if you notice, hopefully this will focus. There it goes. So, if you'll notice on here, it's got like a little washer in between the, the screw head and then the shaft that goes into the body right here. Uh, there's a little washer that is not present on a real one. So I don't know what the rationale for that is. Also, if you notice, the fit and finish isn't exactly perfect. And I want to say these little ears or tabs have actually bent inwards a little bit uh, because this middle piece is not the you know perfect size like it is on a real Surefire. So because of that, it had to actually like bend the metal in order to tighten down. And also, if you notice, this is tightened as much as it can go. Now, I can still push it and move it either direction. Now, if it's on your rifle, it's not really gonna move, but it might get bumped and move to the side. Uh. It's plenty tight unless you basically drag it against something or bang it against something. So that's one con for this as well as this does not get nearly as tight as the Surefire. Cause on the Surefire, if I'll show you, on here without bumping the camera too much on the surefire this thing i mounted it and you can see right there it's a perfect you know milled snug fit there's no washer on that one right there and you cannot move this thing i can i'm yanking on that thing and it is not moving not budging so that is a con of this one here so granted i don't recommend these kind of lights for duty rifles necessarily now if you want to use this light for say home defense or for training or for you know you just want to i don't know you want to make a gun uh just kind of as a backup or something like that if you don't want to spend a lot of money this would be a decent option for that uh, for 70 dollars, i don't have any complaints other really than this mounting system here or the pivoting system whatever you want to call it moves um, with, you know, a decent amount of force. So is that a big deal? Not really. All right, and just so you see on here, here's a little sleeve it comes with, so it'll fit this two CR123 batteries, and here's the head. Uh, whenever I put in the 18650 battery over there, uh, I would thread it on, and it would go to about here, and then it would just stop. And so it wasn't engaging that O-ring. Um, and again, it'll it works, as you can see from right there but you're not gonna get the waterproofness that you would um, normally, you know, using these kind of batteries. So that's a negative for me. Um, at that point, they may as well not even make it a dual fuel. And again, it wasn't any brighter with that light. So that's another negative, I guess, along with this. Now, would I buy this light again? Absolutely. I actually really like this light and it feels very solid. Uh, it feels maybe slightly cheaper than a Surefire, just a little bit by holding it, but, um, from a fit and finish standpoint, um, it feels almost identical. If I were to hand this to you and told you it was a Surefire, you'd probably believe it unless you had one, you know, right there next to you. Um, the tail cap, obviously, is kind of a giveaway about the size. Um, I will show you a comparison. Let me show you that real quick of the labels on here. So you don't buy one of these thinking it's a real Surefire because that's a problem. That's why they put the stickers over it so people don't get, you know, taken advantage of. But there's always going to be somebody on... You know, you not YouTube, but somebody on eBay or somewhere trying to take advantage of people. Uh, so just know this is a real Surefire. That's the label versus this one. Uh, you can tell they're just slightly different. So just know what you're looking for. And again, know that this one has a little washer right there and it only comes with the Picatinny rail section. So that's how you know it's a Chinese knockoff. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Uh, give us a like if you enjoy this kind of content. I like making this kind of stuff because I enjoy testing cheaper things to see, you know, what I can get away with. 
But if you comment, like, that helps with the YouTube algorithm, it helps people find us, and that helps the channel grow. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you appreciate this kind of stuff. Sorry I haven't made a video in the last, uh, really, two weeks now. Um, pregnancy and giving birth and new father, so, you know, all that funness. Um, so I wasn't able to make anything. But anyways, I'll be making videos again probably about once a week uh, again from here on out. But anyways, hope you all have a good one.